the importance of water activity for cannabis safety and quality. With the legalization of cannabis-based products for both medicinal and in some locations recreational use, has come the need to implement safety initiatives. Microbial contamination in either dried buds, extracted oils, or processed edibles can result in allergic reactions, respiratory complications, or foodborne illnesses. In addition, breakdown due to chemical reactions can result in changes in efficacy and potency. Water activity is an effective tool used in the food and pharmaceutical industries to maximize microbial, chemical, and physical stability. It provides the same safety and control to the cannabis market, and it is important that the cultivators and processors understand water activity and how to maximize its usefulness. The objective of this video is to describe the theory of water activity, outline its current inclusion in state regulations, and describe its impact on microbial and chemical stability. Water activity is defined as the energy status of water in a system and is rooted in the fundamental laws of thermodynamics through Gibbs free energy equation. It represents the relative chemical potential energy of water as dictated by the surface, colligative, and capillary interactions in a matrix. Practically, it is measured as the partial vapor pressure of water in a headspace that is at equilibrium with the sample divided by the saturated vapor pressure of water at the same temperature. Water activity is often referred to as the free water, and while useful when referring to higher energy, it is incorrect since free is not scientifically defined and it is interpreted differently depending on the context. Rather than a water activity of 0.5 indicating 50% free water, it more correctly indicates that the water in the product has 50% of the energy that pure water would have in the same situation. The lower the water activity, the less the water in the system behaves like pure water. Water activity is measured by equilibrating the liquid phase water in the sample with the vapor phase water in the headspace of a closed chamber and measuring the equilibrium relative humidity in the headspace using a sensor. The relative humidity can be determined using a resistive electrolytic sensor, a chilled mirror sensor, or a capacitive hygroscopic polymer sensor. Instruments from Novacina, like the LabMaster Neo, utilize an electrolytic sensor to determine the equilibrium relative humidity inside of a sealed chamber containing the sample. Changes in equilibrium relative humidity are tracked by changes in the electrical resistance of the electrolyte sensor. The advantage of this approach is that it is very stable and resistant to inaccurate readings due to contamination, a particular weakness of the chilled mirror sensor. The resistive electrolytic sensor can achieve the highest level of accuracy and precision with no maintenance, maintenance and infrequent calibration. Water activity is an intensive property that provides the energy of the water in a system. Moisture content is an extensive property that determines the amount of moisture in a product. Water activity and moisture content, while related, are not the same measurement. Moisture content is typically determined through loss on drying as the difference in weight between a wet and dried sample. While useful as a measurement of purity and a standard of identity, as we will find in this video, moisture content does not correlate as well as water activity with microbial growth, chemical stability, or physical stability. Water activity and moisture content are related through the moisture sorption isotherm. Currently, governmental oversight of the production and selling of cannabis is handled on the state level, with the actual state department varying by state. Consequently, regulations vary extensively between states. Water activity currently only appears in the regulations and guidance documents for a few states, and these tend to be the states that have had some form of legalized cannabis for the longest time and therefore have the most mature regulations. It is expected that additional states will will add water activity testing requirements to their regulations as markets mature. And if regulations move to the federal level, water activity will be included in any national regulations or guidelines. The states that currently include water activity in their cannabis regulations include Nevada, which requires quality assurance tests and submission of wet marijuana for testing. And it also requires uh, or defines potentially hazardous marijuana products and ingredients based on water activity. California includes in their regulations water activity and moisture content measurement requirements. Oregon states that you must test water activity on usable marijuana for sales or for further processing. Washington state 
uh, includes quality assurance testing, um, which part one includes moisture analysis, and it says you must test water activity on usable marijuana intended for retail sale or for further processing. In addition to the inclusion of water activity in state cannabis regulations, ASTM standards have been established for water activity. These include ASTM D8916-18, Standard Practices for Determining Water Activity, ASTM D8197-18, Standard for Maintaining Water Activity, and ASTM Standard in Progress uh, Stability Testing based on water activity. Each microorganism has an ideal internal water activity, and their ability to reproduce and grow depends on maintaining that water activity. When a microorganism encounters an environment where the water activity is lower than their internal water activity, they experience osmotic stress and begin to lose water to the environment, since water moves from high water activity or energy to low water activity. This loss of water reduces turgor pressure and retards normal metabolic activity. To continue reproducing, the organism must lower its internal water activity below that of the environment. It tries to achieve this by concentrating solutes internally. The ability to reduce its internal water activity using these strategies is unique to each organism. Consequently, each microorganism has a unique limiting water activity below which they cannot grow. An organism's ability to reproduce and grow does not depend on how much water activity is in its environment or its moisture content, only on the energy of the water in its environment and whether it can access that water for growth. A table of water activity growth limits for different microorganisms is shown. These growth limits indicate that all pathogenic bacteria stop growing at water activities less than 0.87, while the growth of common spoilage yeasts and molds stop at 0.7, which is known as the practical limit. Only xerophilic and osmophilic organisms can grow below 0.7, and all microbial growth stops at water activities less than, than 0.6. Cannabis products with a water activity higher than 0.7 but less than 0.86 are considered shelf-stable but will still support the growth of mold and yeast. Harvested cannabis must be sufficiently dry to allow for storage and transport. As explained previously, water activity determines if molds, yeast, or bacteria will be able to grow on the biomass during storage. Dried biomass will typically have a water activity in the 0.6 to 0.7 range. All molds except a few rare xerophilic species stop growing at water activities less than 0.7. While molds themselves are not particularly dangerous if consumed, the mycotoxins they produce as part of their metabolism can cause severe reactions in some people. In addition, the presence of actively growing mold also means the presence of mold spores. This can be particularly dangerous for a product that is inhaled, resulting in mold spores in the respiratory tract, which can then lead to asthma symptoms. Consequently, the water activity of any harvested biomass being stored or transported needs to be below 0.7. This means that water activity testing needs to begin at the cultivator and processor. If cannabis biomass and edibles are processed to water activities less than 0.7, microbial spoilage is no longer the most likely mode of failure. However, products in this range do not have unlimited shelf life. What other modes of failure are likely to occur to end shelf life? For cannabis biomass or edibles in the 0.4 to 0.7 range, chemical degradation is a strong candidate because reaction rates are at a maximum. Chemical reactions such as Maillard browning, lipid oxidation, enzymatic reactions, and others can affect the taste, appearance, and nutritional value of biomass or edibles. In general, as water activity increases, so do reaction rates. But specific correlations depend on the type of product and the reaction. For cannabis biomass, the reaction most likely to impact its quality is THCA loss due to decarboxylation, which will reduce its potency. For cannabis edibles, the reaction that is most likely to impact the quality is Maillard browning for products containing protein and reducing sugars, or lipid oxidation and or rancidity for samples containing high levels of fat. These reactions are complex and cause problems through the production of odor and flavor compounds. When the reaction has progressed to produce enough undesirable compounds or loss of THCA, the products will become unacceptable to consumers. Water activity of edible cannabis products can also change during storage and transport. Baked edibles will have particularly high water activities and must be tested to make sure they are processed 
to water activities less than 0.86 to prevent the growth of pathogenic bacteria. Then, their water activity must be maintained in the ideal water activity range during storage to both prevent an increase in water activity to unsafe levels, as well as a reduction in water activity that could lead to undesirable changes in texture. To prevent this, edibles need to be packed in a good moisture barrier packaging. The exact packaging requirements to prevent changes in water activity can be modeled and predicted, but the derivation and use of these models is beyond the scope of this presentation. Water activity plays a key role in ensuring the safety of cannabis products and maximizing shelf life. Water activity may be a new concept to many in the cannabis industry, and those familiar with water activity may only know of its ability to control microbial growth. However, in many cases, microbial spoilage is not the most likely mode of failure for the shelf life of a cannabis product. Water activity is related to all common modes of failure and co consequently may be the most important test that can be run on everything from harvested biomass to edibles. If you are interested in learning more about how to maximize the effectiveness of your water activity testing, please contact Dr. Brady Carter.